Hello to everyone and welcome to this DFT webinar. Okay, right now I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Steve O'Neill. Steve is a degreed mechanical engineer with 30 years of experience in the valve industry, working with control valves, pressure relief valves, and pulse jet valves. Steve is the control valve sales manager for DFT, an American valve manufacturer specializing in severe service control valves. So Steve, welcome to today's event. And with that, I'm going to pass things along to you to get us started. So Steve, go right ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Steve O'Neill. Welcome to the DFT Control Valve Webinar. The agenda for today, we'll be covering general control valve overview, what is severe service, problems and solutions, including cavitation, required flow, actuation selection, tight shutoff, slurries and erosion, high pressure, high temperature, in service and repair. We're going to touch on all of these topics and get into some level of technical detail on each. What is the function of a control valve? The main function is to control pressure, pressure drop, flow, temperature. The control valve is commonly referred to as the final control element. What processes are they present in? They're present in power, refining, food and beverage, chemical, petrochemical, water, air, HVAC, and many more. Control valves are present in any process that involves fluid traveling through a piping system that needs to be controlled. There are different types of control valves that you may want to select depending on your CV requirements, your pressure recovery requirements, your modulating control requirements, and what kind of shutoff you require. Globe style control valves are used in applications that require low CV, low pressure recovery, fine modulating control, and a range of shutoffs. Ball style control valves are used in applications that require high CV, high pressure recovery, coarse modulating control, and tight shutoff. So very different from the requirements that you might reselect for a globe style control valve. Butterfly style control valves are used in applications that require high CV, high pressure recovery, coarse modulating control, and a range of shutoffs. And finally, there's the straight through Venturi style control valve used in applications that require high CV, high pressure recovery, fine modulating control, and tight shutoff. What types of service do they control? General service, which includes class 150 and 300, water, gas, and steam service. An example of general service would be 30 PSIG air at ambient temperature in an HVAC system. Medium service includes class 600, 900, and 1500 in water, gas, and steam service. An example of medium service would be 1000 PSIG general service steam in refinery, chemical, or pulp and paper plants. Severe service includes class 2500 and 4500 water, gas, steam, or slurry service. An example of severe service would be boiler feed water with an inlet pressure of 2650 PSIG and a pressure drop of 2580 PSIG. DFT produces specific products for all three types of service, general service, medium service, and severe service. Today, we are here to discuss our most challenging of these, severe service. What is severe service? Severe service is any service that results in excessive wear and frequent maintenance. Severe service conditions may include any or all of the following. High pressures exceeding 1,500 PSIG, high pressure drops 
up to 3,000 PSIG, high temperatures up to 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit, low temperatures down to negative 425 degrees Fahrenheit, highly erosive service, slurries, or high cycling service. Severe service applications tend to be very hard on equipment. These applications require very unique and specialized products. Severe service control valves. DFT has developed unique severe service control valves to address severe service conditions across a range of industries, including power, refining, chemical, and pulp and paper. What are the challenges? Industrial applications present a variety of severe service challenges. Examples would include flashing and cavitation and feed water service, high temperature and D superheater service, high pressure and drum level control, extreme pressure drops and reheater attemperator service, turbine drain service, and potentially damaging erosion and hydrocarbon slurry service. DFT severe service solutions successfully manage these challenging applications and conditions. Severe service control valves are designed to address the special challenges of severe service conditions. In the next section, we will be exploring severe service control valve problems and DFT solutions. Problem, flashing. Flashing definition. Flashing is a liquid flow phenomenon that occurs when the pressure in the liquid flow stream drops below the vapor pressure of the liquid. When this occurs, vapor bubbles form in the liquid. This condition will typically occur at the point in the flow stream where the flow area is at a minimum, the velocity is at a maximum, and the associated pressure is at a minimum. Problem. Cavitation. This slide depicts the deformation and implosion of vapor bubbles under increased pressure. Cavitation is what is referred to when the increasing pressure in the flow stream recovers to the point that it is above the vapor pressure of the liquid. When the pressure recovers, the vapor bubbles implode. During this implosion, liquid jets are formed that impinge on the metal surfaces on the inside of the valve. This phenomenon has the ability to create severe damage to metal surfaces. Effects of cavitation on control valves. Globe-style control valves can be impacted by cavitation in a variety of different ways. Due to the geometry of globe-style control valves, cavitating fluid will come into direct contact with the valve trim. The result can be damage to the trim in the form of metal that is gouged off of the trim. This type of damage typically results in the trim having to be replaced. Globe-style control valve manufacturers have developed special trim packages that can reduce the impact of cavitation. These trim packages can be effective in cavitating service, but there also tends to be additional costs associated with these special trim packages. Cavitation damage. Also due to the geometry of globe-style control valves, cavitating fluid can come into direct contact with the valve body. The result is damage to the body in the form of metal being gouged off of the valve body. This type of damage may result in the body having to be replaced. Ball style control valves, while differing greatly in design from the globe style control valves, encounter a similar issue of the cavitating fluid coming into direct contact with the valve body material. Ball style control valve manufacturers have also developed specialized trim packages that can be effective in cavitating service, but there also tends to be additional costs associated with these special trim packages. Venturi straight through design. The Venturi style control valve manages cavitation differently. Due to the geometry of the straight through Venturi design, any flashing that occurs tends to occur in the middle of the flow stream. Also, due to the geometry of the straight through design, when the pressure recovers, the vapor bubble implosions tend to occur in the middle of the flow stream 
and not near the valve body, greatly reducing the potential for valve body damage. In this slide, we'll see that the, the straight through venturi design eliminates torturous path, it reduces turbulence in the flow stream, and it shapes the flow path, resulting in fluid flow that has the highest velocity and the associated lowest pressure in the middle of the flow cross-sectional area. Straight through venturi control valves are specially designed to reduce the effects of cavitation and have been designed on the basis of the Bernoulli principle. When the straight through venturi control valve is modulating, the flow may get directed from the bottom of the ball to the upper side of the internal surface of the outlet of the valve. To guard against the possibility of the valve body wearing, DFT has designed hardened removable wear bushings in the inlet and the outlet of the valve body. The wear bushings are made of hardened material such as stellite that hold up well to this type of severe condition and improve valve life. Solution, cavitation control. Looking at the above illustration, at P1, the fluid stream is all liquid. Liquid flashes at the valve port when the pressure at the vena contractor drops below the liquid vapor pressure. As the velocity decreases in the exit nozzle, the pressure increases or recovers to P2 and the vapor bubbles collapse. This is the point at which the potentially damaging cavitation occurs. Unlike torturous path valves, straight through venturi control valves manage cavitation. Bubbles form at the lowest pressure and highest velocity, which is in the center of the fluid stream. The subsequent collapse is within the hydraulic barrier, not on the metal surface. Our diverging nozzle provides a smooth recovery prior to the fluid exiting the valve. The straight through venturi design has its basis in the Bernoulli principle. What is the Bernoulli effect? In fluid dynamics, Bernoulli's principle states that an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. The principle is named after Daniel Bernoulli, who published it in his book, Hydrodynamica, in 1738. The Bernoulli Principle the Bernoulli principle states that energy per unit volume at the inlet equals energy per unit volume at the outlet. The Bernoulli equation is P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho GH1 equals P2 plus one half rho V2 squared plus rho GH2. Let us define the terms. P1 equals inlet pressure, P2 equals outlet pressure, rho equals density, V1 equals inlet velocity, V2 equals outlet velocity, G equals gravity, H1 equals inlet height, H2 equals outlet height. The combined term 1 half rho V squared represents kinetic energy well, the combined term rho GH1 equals potential energy. The best example of the Bernoulli principle is often called the Bernoulli effect, which states that the fluid pressure decreases as the fluid velocity increases. The Bernoulli principle illustrated. The illustration shows the typical change in pressure as the fluid moves through the valve. At the inlet, the pressure is P1. Velocity increases through the valve to a maximum as it moves through the valve port. Just after the valve port, the pressure drops to PVC, or the pressure at the vena contracta, which is the lowest pressure in the valve and consequently the highest velocity. As the fluid exits the valve, the pressure recovers to P2, which is lower than P1. Problem, providing required flow dash CV. 
Providing the required flow to satisfy the system conditions is a baseline requirement of any control valve. CV is a flow coefficient expressed as the flow rate in gallons per minute for a pressure drop of 1 psi across a flow passage. CV is also a function of valve design. The higher the required flow, the larger the valve must be in order to deliver this flow. The more efficient the flow path, the higher the CV. Globe style control valves. Different styles of control valves can have drastically different CVs. Globe style control valves, the most common type of control valves, require the flow to follow a torturous path as it proceeds through the valve body. The torturous path creates turbulence that extracts energy from the fluid and also results in an increased pressure drop. These phenomena impact the CV that result in lower flow than other styles of control valves. This is referred to as a low recovery valve design. Although the globe style control valve provides lower CV, it does provide fine modulating control. Ball style control valves. Ball style control valves have smooth contours that minimize the turbulence in the flow stream. This design results in a higher CV than a globe style control valve. This is referred to as a high recovery design. Although the full ported ball style control valve generates higher CV than the globe style control valve, it may not provide the same degree of modulating control. Straight through Venturi style control valves. Straight through Venturi style control valves, a less common style of control valve, has a much different flow path. As the flow enters the valve, it flows through a converging nozzle. This converging nozzle reduces turbulence in the flow stream as well as the energy loss associated with turbulence in the flow stream. When the valve is in the fully open position, the flow passes through a circular flow area. As the flow exits the valve body, it flows through a diverging nozzle that also tends to maintain non-turbulent flow. The elimination of the torturous path and the creation of a straight-through Venturi path results in much higher CVs and the ability to deliver much greater fluid flow. The capacity to deliver greater fluid flow results in smaller, more economical valves. The straight-through Venturi style control valve has the high CV and high recovery advantages of a ball style control valve along with the fine modulating control of a globe style control valve. Straight through Venturi style versus globe style. As discussed in the previous slide, straight through Venturi style control valves generate higher CVs than globe style control valves. For example, a 2 inch globe style control valve may have a CV of 50, while a 2 inch Venturi style control valve has a CV of 90. A 6 inch globe style control valve may have a CV of 445, while a Venturi style control valve has a CV of 794. Again, the fact that a Venturi style control valve generates much higher CV means a smaller and more economical Venturi style control valve can be specified when compared to a globe style control valve. Problem. Actuator selection. An actuator is a device that causes a machine or other device to operate. All valves require some type of actuation. Actuators can range from a simple hand wheel for opening or closing a valve, such as the water shutoff valves on the outside of a house, to something as sophisticated as a high speed pre programmed digital device that is found on the ailerons and wings of modern jet airliners. The most common types of actuators for control valves are spring and diaphragm actuators. However, electric actuators, pneumatic actuators, and gear operated actuators are also commonly mounted on control valves. 
Actuation. Force seated versus position seated valves. In the next two slides, we're going to talk about the differences between these two styles of valves in the associated actuation. Rising stem valves, such as globe style and venturi style control valves, require different types of actuators than rotary ball style control valves. For today's discussion, we will only be considering rising stem valves. A globe style valve requires actuators that can generate enough force to drive the plug into the seat in order to overcome the forces due to the pressure in the flow stream to provide tight shutoff. This is called a force seated design. Severe service valves are typically associated with high pressure, requiring high seating force from the actuator. The higher the pressure in the flow stream, the greater the force required to achieve shutoff. Globe style control valves in high pressure applications can result in large and expensive actuators. Continuing our conversation from the previous slide on actuation, the Venturi style control valve is a position seated valve as opposed to a globe style control valve, which is a force seated valve. The Venturi style design uses the pressure in the flow stream to generate the force required for tight shutoff. The actuator does not have to provide any of the force required for shutoff. The actuator on a position seated valve only has to provide enough force to move the ball, which is the shutoff element, into or out of the flow stream. Therefore, the Venturi style valve requires a much smaller and more economical actuator than its globe style counterpart. Problem, getting tight shutoff. ANSI FCI 70-2 provides the definition for the different leakage slash shutoff classes. Maximum leakage ranges from class two at 0.5% of valve capacity at full travel to class six, which is defined in bubbles per minute. Class six is typically only achieved with soft seated valves. Continuing our discussion on tight shutoff from the previous slide, the DFT Venturi style control valve has an unusually tight shutoff for a severe service valve of class five shutoff. Class five shutoff is defined as five times 10 to the negative fourth milliliters per minute per PSI per inch of port diameter. The tight shutoff is the result of the DFT unique position seated design, which utilizes the pressure in the flow stream to shut off the valve. So the higher the pressure, the tighter the seating force. Problem, slurries and erosion. Erosion also presents unique challenges for control valve applications, especially slurry applications. A slurry is defined as a suspension of solids in liquid. Slurries are present in many applications, such as lime slurries in power plant applications, oil sand slurries in the oil from Western Canada, and coal or cement slurries. Slurries are very abrasive and tend to cause severe erosion in mechanical equipment. Some people tend to think of slurries in terms of liquid sandpaper. Many slurry applications tend to be very tough on the entire flow path of valves. The flow path includes any area of the valve that comes into contact with the slurry, including the valve trim and the valve body. Solution, hardened flow path components. Globe style, ball style, and venturi style control valves are all present in slurry applications. All three styles of control valves use hardened materials such as chrome moly, stellite, or ceramic trim configurations to combat the erosive effect of slurries. Globe style and ball style control valves also use hardened body and bonnet materials such as chrome moly to reduce the effects of slurry on the valve body. Using hardened body and bonnet materials can be very expensive. These hardened materials will extend the useful life of the valve, but eventually 
the body will wear out and have to be replaced. Continuing our discussion on erosion and slurries from the previous slide, in order to combat erosion in slurry applications, DFT has developed a special valve, the UltraTroll. The UltraTroll uses standard body and bonnet materials. Like the globe and ball style, the UltraTroll has hardened trim components, but what really makes the UltraTroll special is the presence of sleeves that are constructed of hardened material. The sleeves are pressed into the inlet and outlet of the valve body and are typically made of stellite. The result of this construction is the slurry never comes into contact with the base body material. It only comes into contact with hardened sleeves and trim material. These hardened sleeves will outlast any traditional valve body material. Eventually, even these hardened sleeves will also experience erosion and must be replaced. The replacement is achieved easily by simply removing the sleeves and pressing new sleeves into their place. Problem. High pressure applications. High pressure applications come with their own set of challenges. Those challenges include containing pressure and managing high pressure drops. Valve bodies and bonnets are required to meet or exceed ANSI B1634 titled Valves Flanged, Threaded, and Welding End, as well as ANSI B165 titled Pipe Flanges and Flange Fittings. Higher pressures require greater wall thickness and flange thickness in order to comply with these standards. All valves, whether general service or severe service, globe style, ball style, or venturi style, are required to conform with these standards. DFT has a rather unique body configuration for the Venturi style control valve. While most severe service control valves are machined from castings, DFT's Venturi style control valve is machined from bar stock that is formed from forged billets. The DFT Venturi style control valve is a class 4500 design machined from A105 carbon steel. In compliance with class 4500, the valves can handle a working pressure of 11,110 PSIG at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But due to the design of the valves, higher working pressures are available. DFT chose bar stock for these high pressure applications to ensure material integrity that is so crucial at these elevated pressures. Problem, high temperature applications. Applications above 800 degrees Fahrenheit would be considered high temperature, severe service applications. In general, metals experience reduced yield and tensile strength at elevated temperatures. All styles of control valves, including globe style, ball style, and venturi style, tend to use special materials in high temperature applications. Standard A105 carbon steel has a working pressure of 6,170 PSIG at 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Chrome Molly F22 material, by comparison, has a working pressure of 7,610 PSIG at 800 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,440 PSIG higher than A105. For temperatures above 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, many control valve manufacturers supply valves made of 316 stainless steel. Other standard forms of construction associated with high temperature valves have an extended yoke to reduce thermal effects on the actuator. The majority of power industry applications are associated with water or steam at high temperatures. A recent trend in the power industry is for new valves in high temperature applications to use Chromoly F22 materials. Service and repair for a trouble-free valve. All control valves, including severe service control valves, require periodic maintenance. Our recommendation is to work with the end user to establish a manageable scheduled preventative maintenance program, or PM. 
and always refer to the manufacturer's installation and maintenance manual. Most plants undergo an annual outage to address maintenance and repair for their equipment. However, if a particular piece of equipment, such as a valve, has not developed any issues, the plant may not conduct maintenance on that valve. As stated earlier, severe service applications present unusual challenges. Due to the nature of these severe applications, maintenance should not be skipped because there are no current issues that are apparent to the operators. These applications do require additional vigilance if the system and the equipment in the system is to remain running at top efficiency. Another unique feature of the DFD Venturi style control valve is the fact that the valve is inline repairable. Simply remove the bonnet and all the trim and wear bushings can be removed and replaced without requiring any special tools. Not only is the DFT Venturi style control valve easy to service, but it is also economical to maintain with repair parts costing only a fraction of valves of other designs. Thanks for attending the DFT control valve webinar. I hope you found the information that was presented to be useful and interesting. So now let's open up the floor for questions. Okay, Steve, thanks so much for that great presentation. Now, as you mentioned, we are going to take some questions from the attendees. Okay, so Steve, here's your first question that came in. You mentioned recovery earlier. What does that mean, and what is the difference between high recovery and low recovery? Recovery is a reference to how much or what percentage of the inlet pressure is present at the outlet, or P2. A high recovery valve such as a full ported ball valve or a venturi style valve will have a P2 that is a high percentage of P1 or the inlet pressure. Valves with high recovery design generate high CVs. A low recovery valve such as a globe style valve will have a P2 that is a lower percentage of P1 or inlet pressure Valves with low recovery designs generate lower CVs. Okay, Steve, thanks for that answer. Here's another question that came in. In a Venturi style control valve, how does the ball function as the shutoff element? The actuator moves the ball into the flow stream. Once the ball is in the flow stream, the pressure in the flow stream acting on the unbalanced area of the ball generates the force required to seat the valve. The higher the pressure in the flow stream, the greater the seating force, and the tighter the shutoff. What is the purpose of the wear bushing in the high 100? When the valve is in the close throttling position, flow tends to be directed upward. The wear bushings serve as sacrificial components that will wear instead of the valve body. Okay, Steve, thanks one more time. And here's another question that came in from the attendees. Could you review how actuator selection is affected by a position seated design versus a force seated design? A force seated design relies on the force generated by the actuator to provide the seating force. A position seated design does not rely on the actuator to provide seating force. The actuator merely moves the ball into the flow stream. The seating force is provided by pressure in the flow stream acting on the ball. Therefore, position seated designs require much smaller actuators. Okay, thanks Steve. Here's another question that came in. Is noise ever a problem for control valves? Any application that generates 85 decibels is typically deemed excessive and unacceptable by modern industry standards. Many valve manufacturers have developed special noise reduction trim. Diffusers can also be installed in the flow stream that result in pressure being taken down in stages to help to reduce noise. And once again, thank you, Steve. We've got time for one more question. Let's take a look. What is choked flow? Flow is a function of differential pressure. 
increase in differential pressure typically results in increased flow. When the differential pressure reaches the point that any additional increase in differential pressure no longer results in increased flow, the flow has reached sonic velocity and is said to be choked. All right, Steve, and with that, we're going to wrap things up right there. Steve O'Neill, thanks so much for taking the time to be here with all of us today. And we'd certainly like to say a special thank you to all of our audience members for being part of this webinar event. Take care and have yourselves a great day. DFT has been manufacturing quality control valves and check valves for over 70 years. The DFT model High 100 control valve is a severe service control valve that can handle a wide variety of fluids, from gases and liquids to light slurries, as well as high pressures and a wide range of temperatures. It features an inline straight through Venturi flow design, which is cavitation resistant. Here you see fluid from the pump filling the pipe with the High 100 in the closed position, showing the Class 5 tight shutoff. The High 100 features ANSI FCI 70-2 Class 5 metal-to-metal -metal tight shutoff as standard. As the valve opens, the fluid jet impinges upon the wear bushing, which is hardened to prevent excessive wear. As a result, through body wear does not occur. If the fluid cavitates, this occurs in the mid-fluid stream away from the body and pipe walls. DFT High 100 is a position seated design, unlike globe valves which are force seated. The control element is a spherical ball that's carried by the cage that positions it relative to the downstream seat by means of linear stem travel. The flow characteristic of the DFT control valve is essentially linear over the complete stroke as shown here. At the intermediate position, where the valve is designed to throttle, flow no longer impinges on the wear bushing, extending the service life of the valve. At full open, valve operates as a true Venturi that can handle high pressure drops. The quick change trim feature of the High 100 permits inline replacement of the internal trim. This minimizes maintenance, downtime, and lowers overall cost of ownership. Various trim sizes are available depending on required flow capacity. Specify DFT control valves for severe service applications. View our complete selection of control valves online at dft-valves.com.